Hey guys, so welcome to this video about the color warper. Now the color warper can be used in two ways. It can be used to make a general color grade or it can be used to fine tune a specific image, selecting color and changing it somehow. Now let's have a look back at this image where we were a minute ago. And we notice in the vector scope, greens are reduced, magenta is reduced, yellow is reduced. And we're mostly in the red space. Now, if I click on this node and you can see a little color warper image there, you can see this color warper net has been slightly reduced. So if I press reset here, you can see it's a lot larger. And look at the vector scope, it's still reduced, but it's spread out a little bit more. Let's press undo. And you see how it's scrunched up a little bit here. This, have just have a look at this image here when I press undo and redo. We've squeezed the colors together a little bit. And look, I've taken yellows, I've, I've taken this yellow and green areas and I've basically, by pulling them in, I'm re desaturating them. So removing saturation from specific parts of this color web. So this is full color and then some reduction here. So that can be used in a stylistic way if you want to reduce some colors in your image or enhance others. Okay guys, so another way we can use the color warper is to select a specific color range and then change that in a, on a per image basis. So let's have a look at this drone shot. I'm gonna delete all the color grade from that that I made before. So now that I'm on the color warper tool, if I select somewhere in the greens, you'll notice a little, you'll notice a little uh, crosshair is appearing in the green section where I am. I can now click and then drag and then change the tone of the green by pulling that point across. At the moment, I've got this auto lock switched on. It might not be on by default and it's gonna pull the whole image so it might affect more. Let's hit auto lock on. So now, now I can drag up to add reds or drag down to add some green. I drag across. Ooh. Add some yellow. So yeah, we could go pretty sci-fi if we want, guys. But obviously, most of the time, it's best to just make subtle changes. So guys, there's a couple of things to mention about the color warper. If I want a bit more detail, I can change the web to a more complicated web. If I want to see that a bit easier, I can press this, this button here to make it a bit larger. And guys, if I want to be more precise about exactly what color I'm changing and not affect nearby colors, I can use this pin functionality. So I hit this pin here. I can touch around, say a spot. So I've pinned in that one free thing in the center. And now if I pull that, it's gonna just focus on one very specific shade of green. So I'm only affecting some of the grass and not all of it. But that's probably too focused for this grass in general at the moment. So that's the color warper guys. Maybe I can want to change the roof a little bit. Put a bit more orange in it. Give it a bit of a pop. I'm going to change the green a bit. Let's refresh that, get rid of those pins. Quite cool. Quite cool and quite useful, just a couple of clicks. I don't use it too often, but it's good to know it's there. 
Thanks for watching this colour warping video guys, we're almost ready to start looking at making our first colour grade. See you in the next video. Guys, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel for more DaVinci Resolve wedding editing tips. For the best learning experience, please check out www.resolveweddings.com for the full training program. It's got a detailed A to Z learning structure and loads of private lessons for serious professionals at a very reasonable price point. Thanks for watching.